Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Aaron Viner. In our top story, Israelis were devastated after hearing news of the tragic school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a statement expressing his deepest condolences to the families of the slain school children and teachers caught up in the senseless massacre. Netanyahu said, I speak for the entire nation of Israel when I say to the families and to the American people that our hearts are with you. Israeli security services prevented another attack on Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman. Authorities cleared for publication details regarding a conspiracy by several members of the Islamic Jihad terror group to detonate an improvised explosive device on an Israeli road the defense minister uses each day to reach Jerusalem from the Judean community of Nogdim, where he lives. According to a statement released by Israeli security services, six Islamic Jihad members have been apprehended. The two ringleaders of the terror plot are both residents of Bethlehem, who served time in Israeli prisons for previous terrorist-related activity. The suspects reportedly admitted to being motivated by the Palestinian Authority's program to pay incentives to convicted terrorists. Back in 2014, several Arabs were arrested for purchasing rocket-propelled grenades with the intent to attack the defense minister's convoy. There is tremendous hatred for Lieberman among Arabs because of his hard stance on terror. The Shin Bet Security Agency, Israeli police, and the IDF coordinated their efforts to thwart this most recent threat to the defense minister's life. The Knesset has approved legislation that allows Israel to withhold funds from the Palestinian Authority as long as the PA continues to pay terrorists and their families. The measure was inspired by similar legislation passed in the United States. Israeli lawmakers insist that money being used to incite terror should be cut off. The bill was proposed by M.K. Elazar Stern, who is also an esteemed member of the Knesset Christian Allies Caucus. He said the Palestinian Authority not only rewards murder, but encourages it. This is something that must be stopped, it is immoral, and it is a barrier to peace. Last year, the Palestinian Authority shelled out nearly $200 million to the Martyrs Family Fund and another $160 million to the Palestinian Prisoners Club. Arab terrorists are compensated by the PA with monthly stipends. The amount is determined by the severity of their attack on Jews and the length of their prison sentence. The Israeli gas giant Delic Drilling has announced a $15 billion deal to supply natural gas to Egypt, making it the largest ever export agreement for Israel's natural gas industry. Delic Drilling and its American partner, Noble Energy, have agreed to sell 64 billion cubic meters of gas to Egypt over the next 10 years. The chief executive for Delic Drilling said that the agreement is great news for both countries. Yossi Abu explained that most of the gas will initially be used for Egypt's domestic market, but he hinted that Cairo could easily become a major export hub for Israeli gas. This marks the second major export deal for Israel to supply natural gas to one of its neighbors. In 2016, Israel also agreed to export gas to Jordan. Ties between Israel and Poland hit a new low when the Polish prime minister said Jews helped perpetrate the Holocaust. Warsaw has been embroiled in controversy after passing a law making it illegal to mention Poland's complicity in the Holocaust. Anti-Semitic sentiment in the East European country has risen to alarming levels and Israel's ambassador has been threatened. Recently, the Polish prime minister visited a memorial in Munich, Germany, dedicated to Polish fighters who collaborated with the Nazis. The Polish leader said, the lines between Holocaust victims and the perpetrators is becoming increasingly blurred. Several Israeli lawmakers are demanding that Jerusalem's ambassador to Warsaw be recalled. One member of the Knesset angrily stated that the perpetrators are not the victims, and he added that the Jewish state will not allow the victims to be blamed for their own murder. The U.S. House of Representatives has passed a bill condemning the use of human shields by Hamas. The measure states that forcing civilians to stay in areas under bombardment is an act of terrorism that violates human rights as well as international and humanitarian law. Hamas is notorious for insisting that civilians remain in areas where the terror group operates, thus making innocent men, women, and children possible victims of retaliatory strikes. Israel has attempted to prevent this by dropping pamphlets and using loudspeakers to warn civilians in Arabic of impending danger. This new legislation also calls on President Donald Trump to direct U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley 
to use American influence at the UN Security Council to secure support for a resolution imposing multilateral sanctions against Hamas for the use of human shields. Jerusalem is taking action to enforce an anti-BDS law against Amnesty International after the group accused Israel of war crimes and issued a call to boycott products produced in Judea and Samaria. Amnesty also wants an arms embargo against the Jewish state. The anti-BDS legislation would allow the Israeli finance minister to impose civil sanctions on entities that promote or take part in economic, cultural, or academic boycotts of Israel by denying them tax benefits. Finance Chief Moshe Kachlan said it's unthinkable that organizations can call for harming the state of Israel and IDF soldiers while at the same time enjoying tax benefits. This regulation puts an end to that absurdity. A member of the Palestinian delegation to the United Nations told a group that he will never stop teaching his children to throw stones. The envoy boasted to students visiting UN headquarters that he is proud that he threw rocks at Israelis. Danny Danone, Israel's ambassador to the world body, slammed the Palestinian representative, saying the Palestinians are no longer trying to hide the truth. The Palestinian leadership and its representatives are inciting against Israel and openly encouraging terrorism. He said it cannot be that inside the UN, which is supposed to make peace and protect human rights, a diplomat will incite violence to terrorism, which wounds and even kills innocent Israelis. Israel has successfully test-fired the Arrow 3 long-range missile interceptor. The Arrow 3 rocket is designed to shoot down intercontinental ballistic missiles outside the atmosphere. Israel's defense ministry released a statement saying this successful launch constitutes an important milestone in Israel's operational ability to defend itself against existing threats in the regional theater. Four Israeli soldiers were badly wounded in a terrorist attack. The soldiers were on a patrol along the Gaza border when their jeep was destroyed by a roadside bomb. Terrorists inside the Hamas-run enclave then unleashed a barrage of rocket fire on civilian areas of southern Israel. One family had a very close call when a missile that hit their home directly failed to detonate. No one was injured and Israeli sappers were then able to defuse the rocket. The IDF made a show of force, pounding the Hamas terrorist infrastructure in Gaza with dozens of precision strikes. The Defense Ministry reported uncovering new terror tunnels, which were to be used by Hamas to attack and possibly kidnap Israelis. Israel Now News, we're happy to report that the pilot of the F-16 jet that was hit over Syria earlier this month has been released from the hospital. The unidentified airman was hospitalized for eight days after ejecting from his plane and sustaining serious shrapnel wounds to his abdomen. The head of the Israeli Air Force, Major General Amikam Norkim, visited the pilot and praised him for the way he handled the jet, which was damaged by a Syrian anti-aircraft missile. He told the pilot that he made the right decision by ejecting, which saved the life of the plane's navigator and the pilot himself. The pilot managed to guide the aircraft back to Israeli airspace where it crashed without injuring any civilians. The jet's navigator, who was also wounded, returned to the skies last week, flying with the commander of the IAF. Six Israeli scientists spent nearly a week simulating life on Mars in the Negev Desert at the Mars Analog Ramon Station, or DMARS. The facility is built within the Ramon Crater where conditions emulate life on the Red Planet. According to scientists, there are many similarities to the actual Martian environment in terms of geology, aridity, and isolation. The scientists tested their spacesuits, habitat design, and communication infrastructure with the Mission Support Center. During the simulation, the scientists ate food from capsules, lived in confined quarters, and wore spacesuits whenever they left the pod to conduct experiments. The Knesset Christian Allies Caucus honored South Carolina Representative Alan Clemens with its Lifetime Achievement Award. Clemens helped to revise the Republican national platform, which President Trump adopted without any amendments. It's known to be the most pro-Israel American political party platform in the history of the United States. Clemens said that it was the acceptance of that platform that led the president to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and will lead to the relocation of the U.S. Embassy to the Holy City. Representative Clemens was also recognized for drafting a bill which prevents boycotting, sanctioning, and divesting from Israel. His legislation is the inspiration for similar laws passed in 25 states throughout America. 
Josh Reinstein, the director of the Knesset Christian Allies Caucus, said faith-based diplomacy has changed Israel's international standing forever. And he said people like Representative Alan Clemens are leading a new wave of independent and fervent support for Israel, the likes of which have never been seen before. The Jewish state has been blessed with rain this winter, which has unearthed some fascinating archaeological finds. An Arab man living in Gaza was surprised to discover a 2,000-year-old Roman burial chamber in his backyard. The rain also uncovered a 1,500-year-old clay jug, which was discovered by an Israeli family hiking near Beit Shean. The family was aware that ancient pottery had been discovered in the area, and when they found the vessel, they immediately notified the Israeli Antiquities Authority, who awarded them with a certificate of good citizenship. That concludes the news portion of our show. Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here on a beautiful day on our rooftop studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is Major General Daron Mag. He is the chairman of Alei Negev. General Mag, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Josh. Tell our viewers a little bit about what is Alei Negev. Alei Negev is a village for severely disabled people. The village is named after our loved son, who passed away 11 years ago, and he was born with severe brain injury. He has never spoken one word, never said Abba, never said Mom, never made eye contact. And he was the greatest professor of my life. He taught me about children like him, about myself, about our society. And the village is built for people and children like him. In military we say never leave the wounded behind, but children like our loved son were left behind in Israel society. What we did in El Negev is a new model of integration. Number one, loving them. Number two, giving them the highest life standard by the best housing, the best education system, the best social system, health care, cultural life, social life, music, gardens. And number two, bring the community inside by a mass of volunteers, Christians from Germany, from Holland, from Taiwan, coming visits every day, about 100 people coming to visit, rehabilitation. We serve all the Negev population, all the people who are living in south of Israel, coming to be together with them by being served by hydrotherapy, physiotherapy, music therapy, psychiatric advice, dentist clinic, communication therapy, horse riding, animal therapy. We do it together. We have about Muslims, about 100 Muslims walking, children from the Muslim community, Christians and Jews, with full harmony together. This al Negev, we say every human being is equal by the same rights, not equal by the same power. We are the lucky one who have the power and health temporarily, we need to remember, temporarily, we need to assist those who are unable, those who are unprivileged. General Mag, let me ask you a question here. You're, you're a war hero. People know about you. We study about the things that you've done in schools in Israel. Why did you leave the military career and dedicate your lives to helping these people who can't help themselves? Because our son is here, inside. He's the most deprived. These people in Israel were left behind. Golda Meir, for instance, our prime minister, never said a word about Meir, a granddaughter. And Meira gave interview after Golda passing, told Golda never visited me, Golda didn't love me. Golda told my mom to never mention the Prime Minister of Israel having retarded granddaughter. And my son, for instance, inside me say, my dear father, you can put me somewhere overseas, but it's about you. What kind of person are you if you leave me behind? And as a matter of fact, it was named after my brother who was killed in the Yom Kippur War, 1973. And my brother was left behind, bleeding near his burnt tank, shouting for assistance, evacuated dead already, seven days later. My brother is my oath to serve 
the mil in, in military 35 years and never leave a wounded behind. That's my brother, my personal oath. 11 years later, our second child was born. We gave him the name of my brother that was killed in the war. And then we found ourselves with a child who is like the echo box of my bleeding brother. And again, I swore to never leave him behind, never be ashamed, never put him away. Like the hostages in Entebbe, for instance, there were hostages one week of their life. We flew to Entebbe to kill seven terrorists and bring back 105 Israeli hostages. And my son, who is shouting from his silence here inside me, like saying, my dear father, they were hostages one week of their life. I'm hostage for every single minute. My dear father, I'm the supreme test of humanity. If you love me, if you give me, if you never be ashamed on my presence, my dear father, you will be deserve the title, the highest title, the highest decoration, human being. General Amag, your, your son passed away after 23 years, yet today you have built this incredible village. It's bigger than before. It's more influential. People are learning from the world. What's the future of, of, of Alei Negev? Alei Negev right now building a new rehabilitation uh, hospital for all the Negev population. We have in, in the Negev about 800,000 people, but 60% of the land. And these people who are living in south of Israel, moving after a road accident or stroke or cancer, they are moving to the center of Israel to be treated. So we want to serve the people who are living in the south together with severely disabled children, cognitively, physically, like our loved son, together in the same service centers. And that's what we do. Number one, we build a rehabilitation center. Number two, we build a neighborhood for students for workers, for volunteers. We want Christian from all over the world to come and visit. We want volunteers from the Christian community to come and stay with us and walk the disabled people and be better people. So we build new communities. We build a new community for 600 families who are living uh, walking distance from this village. And this is an amazing project about uh, more 50 million dollars to continue developing Ale Negev. And another goal, which is very important for us, together with Israel Ministry of Education, is we call it Tikkun Olam, make our society a better one. More inclusive, more acceptance, more tolerance, more loving, more caring for the disabled, for those who are unable. Not only in military, not only say in military, never leave the wounded, or one for all, all for one, as we say in military, but also for those who are suffering every minute in their life. General Amag, let me ask you a last question. We have literally tens of millions of viewers around the world. What message do you have for our viewing audience? The message that we are tested by the weakest people in our society in order to be better human being, better society, we need to volunteer, we need to reduce our ego, our selfishness, and we need to take more care and more loving to those who are unable to take a part of my time and do something for those who are right now in the street and give them the highest love ever human being can make. Thank you, General Almog, for being on the show. And thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. Up next, the return to Zion with Karen Hayasod. Shalom and welcome to the Return to Zion with Keren Ha'esod. I'm Eliezer Moody Sandberg, World Chairman of Keren Ha'esod, 
the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. Even before the creation of the State of Israel, Karen Ayesod worked with the Friends of Israel to bring home our sons and daughters. Watch this amazing story about how together we saved a Jewish community from Iraq. In the wake of World War II and humanity's darkest hour, the wheels began to turn dramatically towards Jewish independence. The impossible Jewish dream, sustained through centuries of persecution, was becoming reality. In 1947, the United Nations took a historic vote to establish a Jewish state. But Jews who had lived peacefully for centuries in neighboring Arab countries became a target for violent retribution, especially the 150,000 proud Jews of Iraq. They faced arrest, violence, and a grim threat to their lives simply for being Jews. In response, the Zionist movement launched its most daring operation. Shlomo Hillel, who would later become an Israeli government minister and world chairman of Karen Hayasod UIA, was recruited to plan an operation which would save Iraqi Jews and bring them back to their ancient homeland. Against all odds, Hillel oversaw every detail of a secretive airlift. He started by planning a clandestine operation to rescue a first group of 50 young Jews from under the noses of both the Iraqis and the British authorities in the land of Israel, who ruthlessly limited Jewish immigration. Hillel found two American pilots with a Curtis Commando aircraft, Leo Vessenberg and his co-pilot, Mike. They gave their names to what later became known as Operation Michaelberg. <laughs> יש פה שדה התעופה, מצד שני, מחנה צבאי גדול. כלומר, כשאני פה צריך להיזהר מאוד, יש גדר בכל שדה התעופה, אז ראינו באיזה מקום שהגדר קצת חלשה. באמת מגיע המטוס, מתחיל להניע את הפרופלורים ברעש נורא ואיום, מדליק את הפרוז'קטורים כדי לעבר את המגדל הפיקוח שבתוך שדה התעופה, ואנחנו מתחילים להעלות את האנשים. The pilots then took off and aimed the nose of their Curtis Commando aircraft westward, home to Zion. As we arrived at the airport of Baghdad, it was of course a moment of peace. We arrived at the airport of Baghdad, but the truth is that this is not the end. They were able to hold each other in the hands, and we are going to the Golan of the Golan, and suddenly I saw the fire, the fire. ואני כבר רואה מרחוק את יבניאל, ורואה שתי מדורות, ואז ישר הטייס, בלי לעשות סיבובים, בין שתי המדורות האלה נוחת. Within minutes, the new immigrants had been spirited away to local communities, many pioneered by Karen Hayasod, to begin their new lives in the home of their ancestors. The two pilots were American Christian aviators whose extraordinary act of courage in carrying out their mission is a reflection of their own personal dedication to bring the Jewish people back to their homeland as envisioned by biblical prophecy. The dedication to this vision has been shared by friends of Israel around the world from that time to this day. Operation Michaelberg is not only a tale of incredible daring, it paved the way for most of the Iraqi Jews to return home. From 1951 to 1952, around 120,000 were flown to Israel in operations Ezra and Nehemiah, named after the biblical prophets of ancient Babylon. With the help of Karen Hayasod, these immigrants built new lives. They became leaders of Israeli industry, politics, and the military. Operation Michaelberg also demonstrated that Jews would return to Zion, whatever the circumstances. As the Jewish state celebrates its 70th year, Israel can be proud that time and again, it has plucked Jews from danger to safety. All of this can be tracked back to Shlomo Hillel and two brave American pilots. Today, many more Jews dream of returning to their homeland to play their own part in the miracle which is the State of Israel. Karen Hayasod is at the heart of these efforts. 
Jeremiah promised, your children will return to their borders. With the help of just $70 per month to mark Israel's 70th birthday, this prophecy can be fulfilled. Join Karen Ayesod in celebrating Israel's 70th anniversary by donating $70 a month to help fund Aliyah. Let's bless Israel together. To donate and get information, call us at 1-800-505-1665 or visit our website at www.khisrael.org. Minister Netanyahu of Israel has repeatedly described the Iran deal of 2015 as a terrible and dangerous deal. President Trump has described it as the worst deal he's ever heard of as a businessman. Why is it so bad? Because it allows Iran to maintain its entire nuclear infrastructure. Some of it's mothballed, but it's all there. Iran can continue to develop more advanced centrifuges that can enrich uranium at four times the present rate. And at the end, of eight to 10 years, when the deal begins to expire, Iran will be able to reconnect its infrastructure, its nuclear infrastructure. It'll be able to reconnect its more advanced centrifuges and be able to produce enough enriched uranium for dozens and dozens of nuclear weapons. Now, the Iran deal makes absolutely no connection between the fact that Iran is the world's largest sponsor of terror, that Iran has been complicit in the murder of a half million Syrians, that is, Iran is attempting to overthrow pro-Western governments throughout the Middle East, and that Iran is responsible for the murder of hundreds of American servicemen, both in Iraq and Afghanistan. No connection whatsoever. We've seen now how North Korea, with an even stricter nuclear agree agreement, has been able to violate that agreement has been able to threaten American cities with long-range ballistic miss missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads. The Iranians are taking note. Unless concrete steps are taken to improve the Iranian nuclear deal, to create a connection between the deal and Iran's egregious behavior, to include under the terms of the agreement Iran's illegal ballistic missile system, to end what we call the Sunset Clause. The Sunset Clause that means that at the end of eight to ten years the agreement will expire and Iran will be able to go back to being a nuclear producing country. All that must be down. All of that is the interest of Israel, of course. It's in the interest of the Middle East and the world, but it is above all, above all, in the interest of the United States of America. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Erin Viner reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us again next week for all of your Israel updates.